Well, let me officially welcome you to Cornerstone Baptist Church. My name is Dave Dunham. I am pastor of counseling here at the church. It is my hope to be able to serve you well this evening. On behalf of the family, let me thank you for coming and for being here to support them in their time of need. We have gathered this evening to grieve the passing of Kira Seymour. And it is right to grieve. It is right to mourn and to weep and to be sorrowful. We have come also to celebrate her, to celebrate her life and to celebrate her impact. And your presence here is evidence that she impacted many people. And so to that end, this evening, we are going to hear from some of the family as they uh, share memories and celebrate uh, the beautiful life that Kira lived and the impact that she had. And then I will close with just a few brief comments in an effort to give some comfort and hope. Kira Seymour was born August 2003 in Detroit, Michigan. She passed away on September 30th, 2020. She leaves behind one daughter. She leaves behind two parents, Peter Seymour and Millie Proper, and three sisters. It is evident to me, though I did not know her, that she was well loved by her family and her friends. And it is evident to me that she will be greatly missed. At this time, I'm going to invite any of the immediate family who would like to share a few words to come, and then to close that, I will invite Millie to come and to share her thoughts. Would anyone care to come and say a few words from the immediate family? First, I would like to thank everyone for all the love and support and for joining us today in the celebration of Kira's life. I would also really like to thank Kira's friends for staying with us during this extremely difficult time and making things just a little bit easier. Kira had the most beautiful soul I've ever seen. She was sassy, of course, but was never the type of person who would stay mad for long. God, she couldn't stay serious for long either. I remember in pretty much every serious situation, Kira was always making it so <laughs> you had to try your hardest not to laugh. For me, it wasn't always because she had something funny to say. It was because she was laughing, silent but hysterical, and pointing at me because I was always the one getting yelled at. She had the kind of laugh that made you laugh harder the more she laughed. She was so funny. She never let anything stop her either, especially not when she was grounded. This girl would literally wake up early so she could sneak her friends in while Millie was at work and have them gone in time and act like nothing happened. She was definitely fearless. She wasn't even afraid of becoming a mother. When she had Layla, she loved her so much and was so proud to be her mother. You could see it in her face. She never really wanted help or complained about anything when it came to taking care of Layla. Being an amazing mother came natural to her. In the six weeks she cared for Layla, she was already the best mother I'd ever seen. I was so proud of her too because she continued to do her schooling with Layla right in her lap. <sighs> Having a baby young had no effect on her. She had goals to finish high school and go to college so she can make sure her and Layla had a great life. Now that she's gone, I feel like she took a piece of us all with her. I hate that life has to continue without you, Kira. But I love that we have a piece of you still here with us. 
I promise to keep your spirit alive and to make sure Layla knows how amazing and beautiful you are. <laughs> Fly high, Kira. I love you so much. Anyone else? Are there any friends who would have just a few comments to make? I loved my Kira Bagheera, my sweet Kira all the days. My heart is broken all the days. It hurts to breathe all the days. My sad tearness all the days. All the days I will remember, miss, and love you. My sweet Kira all the days. Carol loved everybody. You can see the bite up. People that came today to pay their respects. You had a problem, she would help you with it. If she couldn't help you, she'd find a way. Always remember, because she's going to be in your hearts forever. She's a new shining star in the sky. You go out and look tonight, you'll see a new one. That'll be Carol. Say your prayer. Thank you for coming. Thank you everybody for coming by. I looked around and there's a lot of people here. Uh, our spirit carries on inside all of us. Such a tragedy at a young age. Uh, I just hope nobody else experiences this that we're going through today. She was our sunshine in a lot of our hearts. I know it's hard for people to get up here and say something about her. But she'll overlook that for you. It's real tough for everybody. I know it's tough for me. I remember the first time I got in front of people to say stuff, how nervous I was. But it's okay. If you, if you can't make it up here, we'll understand. Just your being here is enough to let us know that she was loved. She was loved so well. I'm going to miss her. She was, she was my fifth-born granddaughter. Oh, I wish I could have been there longer, seen her longer. Oh, my wife, who passed away last year, she was looking so forward to seeing these grandbabies. But she's looking down from heaven, Kira's with her. And I want Kira to know that we'll be helping look after that baby as long as we're around. Anytime you need a sitter, just give me a holler. I'll come over, give you a hand. But I don't know what to say myself. This is such a tragedy at such a young age. Whatever you do, give your family and your loved ones a hug from yourself today. Because you don't never know if it's going to be a car accident or if somebody chokes or something or they could just pass away from a heart attack that's unexpected. You never know when your loved one's going to leave this earth. So try to make every day good for them and good for your neighbors and good for your friends. 
Because without friends, you really haven't got anything. And I look around at Anne, I could see she had everything. Thank you for coming. An unfinished life is what we have here. And then if you know life, then, then you know pain. And I'd like to know peace before I'm laid to rest. Uh, all of us are here because we're a little bit further broken today. We all were probably before this incident, but furthermore today. Um, we all spent a significant amount of time with Kira. Kira trouble Anne, right? I didn't fully understand the first time that I heard it, but I had already known. Uh, I mean, her laugh was, was never appropriate, but infectious. It was uncontrollable. But I guess to experience joy and to have laughter, there really isn't an appropriate time not to. Peter and I, as I look at my brother, and I understand the pain that he has as a father and Millie as a mother I don't ever want to experience. The two original badass kids, because that's what they were. We go to Uncle Pete's house and, well, they get to do what they want, ish. You know? The influence that the two had growing up on each other, we wanted to make sure that they were able to form a bond the same that we had. It's important, you know, we, we're responsible for ourselves, but we're also responsible for one another. I know that all I can hear is her continuing to giggle and laugh, and no matter how many times we tell her to knock it off or to stop, it just keeps coming, and there's nothing. What's so funny, there's, we're just sitting here, and one laughs and then the other laughs, and it's just absolutely out of control, but, you know, it's... There's no greater joy than, than kids. And as I look at everybody today, there's, there's no secret to being a parent. In all honesty, we're really afraid of you kids. We are, we don't know what to do. We're figuring it out the same time as being parents as you're figuring it out as being people. And, and today, as we get ready to lay Kira to rest as a parent, today we've realized our greatest fear. So when your parents are being annoying and they want to know where you're at or what you're doing or what you have going on, this is why. We love you more than we love ourselves and we give everything that we can to make sure that you guys have things better than we did. I can say very easily that you know, Kira loved she just loved life and she wanted to run and play and absolute chaos and you know what there is no time and place to, to pick or choose when to be happy I think of all the opportunities that I got to spend with the kids and, and, and see that and experience it it's, it's, there's, there's no greater part of life than to experience that through the little ones that just love so effortlessly and every parent in here doesn't quite feel the pain that her parents are feeling right now, but we understand. Every time you guys walk out that door, every time you don't call when you're supposed to, everything is all. There's, there's a cause for it. We love all of you. And I know she loved all you guys. I love you. I miss you. 
There aren't enough words to describe how insignificant I feel without you here. My best friend, my sister, my ride or die. <laughs> you made the most out of every minute we were together. I never wanted to leave your side. <laughs> From the zoo to Cedar Point to up north to the park, we did everything together. <laughs> Bullying Bella to teach her not to be so soft, but her still getting her way. <laughs> Staying up so late, we didn't fall asleep until 7 a.m. <laughs> and I'd have to wait forever for you to wake up the next day. <laughs> and screaming songs together in the car made any driver miserable. <laughs> I really thought I was invincible. <laughs> this broke my heart knowing I'll never be able to hear you talk again. You were for sure the better part of me. I love you, sister. I'll hold it down for you to have forever. Thank you for always having my back. I'll always have Layla's, Bella's, and Skye's. Kira was like a sister to me. It's so sad. It's so sad. Oh, she's gone already. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna stop crying for you, Kira, because I know you <laughs> let me can't see you crying. Kira, I always had my back. And I always say hers. Her and Millie treated me like family. I remember every day after school, we would get slushies from Speedway. And we'd just go in her room to listen to music and just vibe and make videos. But my baby, she gonna have her justice. And I just want to let you know, Kira, that we always going to love you and we never going to forget about you. This is your real baby. We just living in it. I want to give my condolences to the family. And I want to thank Kira's mom for bringing my better half into this world. Kira was a really good person. I remember I used to walk around with my head down. She would say, Bestie, what's wrong? I said, Nothing. Bestie, what's wrong? Nothing. You don't love me anymore? Of course I do. Well, then you would tell me what's wrong. So then obviously she got it out of me. And I told her what was wrong with me time to time. She, we fell off, but she was the best part of me. I loved her so much. And it hurts to see her go. Long live Kira, we love you. You know, growing up with Kira, I don't know how she did it, man. I, uh, I looked at Millie and their family and I looked at them like they were my second home. And, you know, I looked at her like she was my sister. I remember riding our bikes through their neighborhood just stirring up trouble. <laughs> That's just what we did. 
and you know it's it's hard you know I fell off with her when I moved and you know we just reconnected LL okay forever I spoke at the Cain individual. Everybody knows. Hey. Um, I just would like to send my condolences out to Kira's family. And I've been friends with her for a while. And while I ever, oh, not one. Whenever I was over her house, her family always made me feel like I was a part and always treated me like I was one of theirs. And um, it was never a dull moment with Kira and me and her kind of like the same person, you know, we laugh at everything. It's just what we, what we did. And every time after school, we would always go to Taylor's house, eat all her food, drink all her drinks, try to be gone before her parents got home, because it was like 20 of us there. Um, we would go to her house, play music, sneak out at like two in the morning, go on a trampoline, try not to get caught by Millie. <laughs> It was plenty of stories, but we'll save that for another day. Um, it's sad that we have to see her go. Such a beautiful soul, and she touched many hearts. And um, she's she was my better half too, Dennis. So wherever you're at, I don't know where you're at, but she was like my other half too. At one point, we were really close in middle school. But we fell off when we went to high school, but um, we still talked here and there. But the bond never went away whenever we were together. It was always laughter and joy. And I seen her on her birthday. I think that was the last time I seen her, which was August 3rd, I think. Yeah, whenever we went out to eat. And um, it was just, we had fun in the car on the way to I think it was Shogun's, wherever we went out to eat. And after me and her were sitting on the hammock at Riley's house just talking and catching up, and I never thought that that would be the last time I would see her or speak to her. It's pretty hard, but I know that she's in a better place. And um, we all loved her, and she was loved by many, so I hope when she's up there, just a head of my grandma and my uncle for me. Millie, would you like to come? On behalf of my family, I'd like to begin by thanking everyone who's here and for those who have sent their condolences. The outpouring of love during this difficult time has been a reminder of the impact that Kira had on so many lives. Kira was born on August 2nd, 2003, to myself and her father, Pete. She had a smile that lit up the room from day one. She had a contagious laugh that would make any problem you were having go away. She was always the life of the party, center of attention, always dancing, singing, being silly. Kira was good at everything she attempted. She was an amazing soccer player from age four and an awesome volleyball player since age 11. She put her all into both and was just as determined to teach her little sister, Bella, everything she knew about both. Kira was definitely my little red-headed firecracker, always keeping me on my toes. She would argue her point till she couldn't argue anymore, and then she'd argue a little more. 
I always told her she should have been a lawyer. She would have been great at it. Kara was an amazing light in everyone's lives. Hearing all the stories the last couple of days from all of her friends, they all agreed. She was such a positive, happy girl. She was a loving daughter, sister, aunt, granddaughter, cousin, best friend, and above all, she was an amazing mother. She loved baby Layla with every ounce of her being. So much patience and love. Even through the sleepless nights, she still exceeded in school. We bonded incredibly strong over the last year during her pregnancy and after. We were looking forward to so many more memories. We obviously never discussed funeral arrangements, but she did mention that she wanted hers to be lit, as the kids say nowadays. <laughs> uh, I know this wasn't quite the lit party that she would want, but I hope that we made her proud and I will get justice for my baby girl. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it is not my intent to talk very long. You all did not come here to hear some random guy go on and on. But I've been asked to say a few words to close out the service, and so I would like to do as best I can, offer some means of comfort and hope in what is an awful tragedy. As a Christian pastor, it is my conviction that God cares about hurts and sorrows. More to the point, God knows what it is to grieve and wants to provide comfort and hope to those who suffer grief. Christianity believes that God created the world and us in it, and though we have rejected him, he loves us, and he sent his son Jesus to come to earth and take our punishment. The Bible teaches Jesus came, suffered on a cross in our place, and because of his death and his resurrection, there is hope in the face of tremendous loss. When we suffer, we often feel alone. I gather that today, perhaps you do not feel that, because this is quite a room full of people who loved Kira. But there are days when grief is heavy and it feels very lonely. And in such days, I'd want you to remember at least one thing, from this moment. You have far more in common with Jesus Christ than you might think. For Jesus did not merely suffer in the past, but rather when he was raised from the dead, he kept in his body the scars of his crucifixion. He, he could have been raised with a perfectly complete body with no damage, no hurt, but he kept holes in his hands. And he kept those as a way to identify with us and to say, I know what it is to suffer. I know what it is to feel deep pain. And you are not forgotten and alone in those moments. More than just solidarity, Jesus' death offers hope beyond grief. Grief does not just go away. Despite the well-intentioned words of many people, time does not heal all wounds. And there's a sense in which you would not want this grief to go away. Though we want the intensity of our feelings to pass, we grieve because we love. And it is evident that you loved Kira deeply. And you don't want to forget that moment. You don't want to forget this moment. You don't want to forget the intensity of your feelings for her. You grieve because you love. The Bible tells us that God loves. In fact, one of the most famous verses in all of the Bible, John 3, 16, states that God so loved the world that he sent his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God loves so much that he sent Jesus to die 
and he invites us to trust him. But God cares not only about your future, he cares about your sorrow. So in conclusion, allow me to reference one last passage of scripture. In the Old Testament, there's a book called Psalms, which is just a collection of songs. And one song, Psalm 56, verse 8, says this. The author, speaking of God's comfort, says, You keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in a book. God cares for every broken heart. He cares for every tear, every sorrow, every moment of grief. He tracks them because he loves you. And though perhaps today is just a moment to wrestle with, in the days ahead when it feels weighty again, when it feels heavy again to remember grief, perhaps I could encourage you to consider letting God provide comfort, crying out to him. There's a God who loves suffering people, and I hope that you will allow him to love you. I'm going to pray and pray for the family, and then at that moment, uh, our funeral director will come and give some direction. Oh God, I am so sorrowful for this family and these friends who have lost a very beautiful person. And as they grieve and mourn, I pray, would you be pleased to comfort them? Would you be pleased to help them feel just a sense of peace, even in the midst of heartache? Would you be pleased to help them have a sense of your nearness and care for them? I pray that as they remember and celebrate Kira's life and, and the beauty that she brought to their world, that you would allow that to bring a sense of joy once again to them in the midst of sorrow. We do pray that you would bring about the right justice in this situation. We pray that you would cause hearts uh, to, say so to stay soft, we pray that you would cause hearts to look to you and find exactly what they need in a moment of intense pain and loss. You are a God of comfort, and I pray that you would make that known to these grieving souls today. And in Jesus' name I pray that. Amen.